Hello and welcome. It is February 27th, 2020, and this is Truly News. I am your host, Jason Van Sickle. As we begin this new day, let's start by increasing your knowledge and expanding your insights with a review of today's news. As always, we begin with a look at the top stories from around the country. And here are the stories that are leading today's news. Thanksgiving was a reflection of the last nine months with two American views of the pandemic. For some, the holiday was marked by family gatherings with little recognition that a major health crisis continues to surge across the country. People boarded planes to travel across the country and extended families gathered in maskless groups to take part in family celebrations. For others, this was the first Thanksgiving where family gatherings were replaced by phone calls or videos in order to maintain social distance and ensure safety. As the rest of the country tried to focus on things for which they were thankful, Trump gathered reporters to continue claims of massive voter fraud and an election process that he says was rigged at the highest levels of state government. Trump seemed to signal concession when he responded to a reporter's question of whether he would abide by the electoral college outcome. He said he would, but his response may simply have been an unscripted response to an unexpected question. In other news, Students across the country will get a break from standardized tests for the year ahead. The planned testing of math and reading comprehension, which benchmarks American students, was officially postponed until 2022. That means that hundreds of thousands of 4th and 8th graders will have one less test to worry about this year. And that is your top news for today. Now, in our look beyond the main headlines, let's begin with the latest advances in science, technology, and space exploration. In science news, the Food and Drug Administration approves a treatment for progeria. The FDA recently approved the first drug for the rare disease progeria, which causes rapid aging. Most individuals born with progeria only live into their mid-teens, and they commonly die from heart attack or stroke. Scientists know that part of the cause is a buildup of defective proteins in the body. The new drug helps to address that issue, and it has been shown to prolong life for up to two and a half years. In technology news, TikTok gets another extension of the Trump-imposed sale deadline. The Trump administration has been pressuring TikTok to sell its U.S. operations to an American company. TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, has been working on a deal with Oracle and Walmart, but the deal has not been finalized. Several deadlines imposed by the White House have come and gone, and it will grant an extension for the completion of the deal. The new deadline is December 4th. In space news... The first space junk removal company has been hired by the EU. The European Space Agency has signed a $102 million contract with a Swiss startup company called Clear Space. The company is focused on developing the ability to remove junk from space. A lot of debris has gathered in orbit around Earth as rocket parts and old satellites begin to clutter space in near-Earth orbit. The first mission of Clear Space in 2025 will be to retrieve an old rocket. And that is your science, technology, and space news for today. Now we look at the latest in health, social, and environmental news. In health news, lack of activity increases heart failure in older women. A study published in the journal Circulation Heart Failure by University of Buffalo researchers found that sedentary time increases the risk of heart failure in older women. The study tracked 81,000 women aged 50 to 79 over nine years. The results showed increased heart problems with more inactivity. 
The risk was especially high in women who spent more than six and a half hours of their waking time sitting or laying down. In social news, election and racism become new focus of social media disinformation. New research from the University of Michigan found that national attention in the form of social media disinformation has shifted over the last few months from COVID to election and racism. COVID had dominated misinformation efforts on the internet for months. However, recently the election and racism have become several times more likely than COVID to appear on websites that promote disinformation. In environmental news, carbon taxes are seen as a way to reach net zero carbon goals. Over the last year, many countries pledged to reduce their carbon emissions to zero. China, Japan, and South Korea joined the European Union in that pledge this year, and President-elect Biden promises the United States will join the effort as well. However, it will be difficult to get people off of carbon-producing fuels, which is why carbon taxes are becoming more popular as a way to raise the price of fossil fuels. And that is your health, social, and environmental news for today. Now it is time for our look at economic and world news. In economic news, GDP grew last quarter making up for losses posted in the second quarter. This week, the Bureau of Economic Analysis released the gross domestic product number for the third quarter of this year. The GDP is the total value of the goods and services produced during a period. GDP grew by roughly 8% last quarter, but that was following a fall in GDP of nearly the same amount in the second quarter. Therefore, the newest number could be viewed as a recovery and not a strong economy. In world news, the United Nations finds women more affected by COVID. A new report by the United Nations points out that women around the world have been disproportionately affected by COVID. The gender gap has widened during the pandemic as women have taken on more domestic chores with stay-at-home families while also facing more time off and greater job losses. The findings were the result of data analysis and surveys conducted across 50 different countries. And that is your economic and world news for today. To wrap things up, we take a look at your entertainment options with newly released movies, shows, and books. In newly released movies, today's movie is Dolly Parton's Christmas on the Square. A woman who plans to sell a small town without regard for the people who live there receives a visit from an angel. Dolly Parton's Christmas on the Square is now showing on Netflix. In newly released shows, today's show is The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. In the majestic mountains of Utah is a hidden social circle with luxury homes and shopping sprees. The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City is now showing on Bravo. Finally, in entertainment news is our newly published book. And today's book is A Promised Land by Barack Obama. In the first volume of his presidential memoirs, Obama offers personal reflections on his life and presidency. This book is presently number one on the New York Times nonfiction bestseller list. And that is your entertainment news for today. As always, we end our podcast with Hope for Humanity, stories about the goodness and kindness that people show each other every day. And here is today's story. From Brownwood, Texas, a woman reflects on a moment of true gratefulness. Thirteen years ago, Haley Allen was 16 years old. Unfortunately, tragedy struck as she lost her mother and brother. It was the darkest moment in her life. Her dad wasn't around, so it was up to her to deal with life, which included making funeral plans. As she shopped for funeral clothes, she finally broke down in the middle of a store. At that moment, a stranger, who worked at the store, approached her to see how she could help. 
She comforted Haley and offered to give her whatever clothes she needed. It was a great moment of kindness that passed without thought until this last year. While recounting the story to her son, Haley decided to try to track the woman down. After considerable effort, she finally found the woman, Melissa Mullins, and 13 years later, reunited to say thank you. And that is your news for November 27th, 2020. Have a wonderful day.